How's it going everybody? My name is Will Robson. You can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. or at twitter.com at Robson Inc. I think that's my tag. Anyway, so today or the past, I suppose, well actually yeah, I started it yesterday. This uh, page took about five hours to pencil. Um, this is for a book called Meta Rising, which I'm starting the first issue of and this is the first page for. And uh, I'm starting to put a lot more detail into my pencils. Generally, I didn't consider myself even penciling anything because since I'm a penciler and inker and work digitally, I usually went from pretty rough pencils into um, a finished product. But I found recently, well, I found over inking all of my books that I get to the inking stage and there's a lot of guesswork of line weights and uncorrect form and that's what this stage really is. The pencil stage is to try and get as much correct form down as possible. When I say form I mean trying to render out all of these objects I'm drawing as much occupying a space as a three-dimensional object as possible. And that's all this type of stuff that I've learned from Mark Hampton's figure drawing design and invention and you know how to draw comics the Marvel way. They always talk about you gotta draw uh, your images so they look as three-dimensional as possible and there's little tricks I do to do that anyway I never draw a head straight on I never draw a head exactly profile and I never do the same with a torso or legs or anything like that I'm always trying to draw everything in a three-dimensional space because I know that's sort of what Jack Kirby did I know it's what John Romita Jr. does and it does look like everything you're drawing is three-dimensional and the better I can get at making stuff look three-dimensional the better I will get at being a comic book artist uh, so th this is a pretty crazy page. Um, it's not going to make too much sense just by looking at it because it's more one of these sort of recap pages where it's the first page and they're basically saying there's a massive war that went on and then you sort of see certain characters or people related to certain characters as I go on. Anyway, I'm going to talk a bit about what I'm drawing. So I'm drawing this crazy ripped Russian dude which I just basically made like the whole character. These are, these are all like people with superpowers fighting but in a military aspect. Um, and I've been studying a lot of Spawn recently, about issues 50 through 100. I've never actually seen them before until maybe a couple months ago. I'm absolutely blown away because Greg Capullo and Tom Gefallen are my two favourite artists of all time. Besides like John Byrne and Bomb John Buscema and all these people. But um, I've just been absolutely blown away with the amount of texture work that they do. They create so much textures with just using black and white so I've really just been studying that every single night and when I'm sitting on trains and stuff to band practice and stuff I just look at um, all the uh, the art from the book and I'm just picking up a lot of stuff and I just fit, I wrapped up another project for um, another company and I wasn't really too happy with the way my art came out and I decided uh, no more crappy art I have that as my desktop background like I know I can do but I just need to put a bit more time in and I think where I need to put more time in and this was the exa example of that is my pencil stage and I think it's really paid off I've also spent a lot more time on the roughs of my page instead of just chucking down something uh, and then going with it. I've really been deciding what's the best possible shot I can do because the better shot that I choose the more I'm actually going to want to draw the page and the faster it will actually get done and uh, the final product will be much better. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Uh, let's see, i got this sort of American G.I. Joe like dude here which I basically made like a super strength as well and he's choking this guy there's just a lot of action going on I, I think this first panel is a bit um, I feel like I could have had the guy shooting his shooty blast or whatever the hell that power I made him have could have been closer but there is a lot of text to go in there so I don't know how the letter is gonna want to space it and I love this shot here of this guy in the foreground this is um, sort of I suppose what I've got from Capullo, I've noticed a lot of when he shows, like in Haunt, he shows like a shot of dead bodies. He usually has like an upshot of someone's face like that in the foreground. And I also notice it in his work on Batman in The Joker. He, there's, um, there's a story with The Joker where you can see lots of dead people and they have a close-up shot like that. And here you see a bit of a pause. I actually go to Google because I didn't really know what the bottom of a car looked like. Um, so I just sort of Googled under a car and I saw they had these like three sort of peggy things and then a bunch of stuff and then I just added a bunch of smoke and, and you know, that's a good trick if you have to draw a, a big background and you want it to look more detailed without having to draw much detail just draw a lot of smoke and it will look cooler because uh, if you have a good colorist they can make that smoke effect look great 
Um, and I also had to draw a dog on this in the script. It said uh, a dog sniffing a man. And I realised, oh man, I need to study up on drawing dogs. I know I have to draw a cat later on. I think the next page I have to draw a cat. So I think for the next couple of days I'm going to do some animal studies. Because I've, I've studied animals before. If you can see the rough breakdowns of that dog there, I have sort of made something for it. But it still is not great. It's not as strong as my human anatomy figure work. Um, so now I see I'm adding... I, the real reason why I'm adding textures and stuff in my pencil stage now is because I was getting I was getting uh, problems figuring out the thickness I wanted my render lines to be. Sometimes they'd be too thick, or most of the time I find them to be too thin. So now I've just chucked in... I, I'll, I'll be chucking in loads of more render lines than this in inking, and I'll be recording that as well, so you'll see the difference. But I chucked it in there just as a reference of, hey, this is how thick you should make it. So here I'm doing the dog. I decided in the end I was just going to make him sort of a curly-haired, almost uh, border collie type dog, uh, just because I can draw that type of hair quite well uh, instead of learning how to draw fur and stuff. Since they're more hairy dogs than fur. Uh, and then I didn't really draw background in that panel. I sort of just chucked in some lines because I have I, I enjoy doing that in the ink stage where I just chuck in a perspective ruler and then I just draw a bunch of buildings. And I think that's supposed to be Tokyo as well. So I'm going to draw a lot of stuff that has sort of. Um, Japanese writing on it and stuff. Uh, so here is a shot uh, which I had to draw of a girl or a woman lying down and she's been shot in the head and it's pretty, you know, you can go extremely gruesome or you can go subtle and I think I did it quite subtly. I mean I have, you can see I'm sort of having a lip drooping like she's been lying there for a while so all the muscles of, you know, tension from a lip have gone. I've got her hair all curled up and squished like, you know, she's been obviously sweating, there's loads of fire around and running around killing people. And then I sort of have the blood on her head following just the, the curves of um, what I made the uh, her, blah, 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 what I made the form of her head like. And then she's supposed to have a, a what are they called, a thing around her neck that's got a picture of a baby on it, which is one of the main characters, because this is a flashback. And then I realised halfway through in the script it said uh, she needs to have some electricity shooting out of her hand, uh, her dead hand, to show that she had electric powers, so I just chucked in a quick hand there and I sort of covered up a lot of anatomy with rubbish and stuff because the great thing about drawing rubbish and rubble is that no one can tell you like oh that looks wrong because you can't go wrong drawing rubble it's not like that's the perfect anatomy or the perfect form for rubble and I learned that from Todd McFarlane he loves I mean if you look at Spawn and stuff he loves drawing a bunch of rubble now this panel I redid about a couple, uh, six times or something and I'm really happy with the, the choice I chose in the end and now I'm getting into the, the fun stuff which is sometimes I uh, well, I used to wait to do uh, the step I'm about to talk about in inks, which is draw like things like a coffee cup on the table and a newspaper. I figured, oh, I can just do that in the inks. But when I got to the ink stage, I was so lazy by then. Like, I just wanted to get the page done, that I would just skip doing all that and just chuck in render lines. So I figured, right, how about in the pencil stage? I add those in now, like you see here. And then in the ink stage, it's already there. All you know, I, I can easily just chuck line weights in, and then suddenly I've got this incredible what seems like more detail when all I've done is chuck in a teapot and a cereal bowl and a newspaper and a pencil. And I've got little things like the pencil is pointing towards the character and, and uh, I'm going to have this bush, but like this shrubbery here. And it, it suddenly just feels like a far fuller shot when there really isn't that much detail. These sort of shots that you can show uh, looking down. I mean, obviously you need to be good enough so you can draw these type of perspectives because I used to have so much trouble with this. Um, but I really, those shots always look impressive and they always bring great variation. Because one thing you should always avoid is drawing a shot from straight on. I mean, it's great, to, you obviously can draw straight on shots, but try and have one shot on every page that's either a worm's eye view or a bird's eye view, or just some interesting angles of faces and things because it suddenly, it doesn't look as flat. Because what I see, find in a lot of newbie comic book artists and what I used to do myself was I would always draw straight on shots. And um, I remember showing my work to a guy called Ian Churchill. He's one of my favorite artists. He was he drew Deadpool in the 90s and stuff. He's always at uh, England, uh, what's it called? Comic Cons, he, he, that's what he told me. He's like, switch up your shots and do this and that. Uh, and it really helped me a lot. And that was maybe two, three years ago. And I've come a long way since then. So now I've got this other guy and he's working on um, I know he's supposed to be inventing something, so I have him sort of using a soldering iron, because I don't even know that's, that's what it's called. And this time I actually did chuck in Spotting Blacks there, because I just wanted to show them that that's what I'm going to do, where he's, you know, whatever the sparks are flying from what he's doing. And then, and then in the script it just said there's some guy in the background in a suit, 
Uh, I have no idea who this guy is, and I figured, well, if he's inventing something and someone's watching him, he's probably got to look a bit smart, so I gave him a little moustache. He kind of looks like Commissioner Gordon, but whatever, it's all good practice for hopefully eventually drawing Batman one day. Uh, and then I wanted to make him a bit more intelligent, so I gave him a tweed suit, which is easy, just basically drawing a bunch of ch checkers over it. Uh, and then I think I just showed myself exporting the page, uh, which obviously sped up way too there, so you can see it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. You can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. or at Twitter at Robson Inc. And I'll upload the link soon. Thanks very much. See you guys.